Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you, as always, for your tweet. Craig is here, as is Stevie and Don. Don, you said 10 months ago... <laughs> oh, you said... <laughs> you said what? the age you is catching said, up with said. Messi and might not be relevant anymore. How the tables have what? turned. He's favourite to win the Ballon d'Or with the most goals and assists and free kicks in Europe in 2021. Do you honestly believe I sent that tweet? He's, Messi is not relevant anymore. That is something that I would never, ever say or tweet. You you said he was on the wane. Well, maybe he was. Right. Well, I he didn't clearly say wasn't. He was irrelevant. Well, I was wrong then, wasn't I? I was wrong, but you get you get to a certain age, you get to a when, when you're at his level, and when you are unbelievably good, probably the best that's ever played the game. There's going to be a point in your career where your numbers might dip slightly. Never said he was irrelevant. Never. Bat it off, Don, lad, bat it off. With reports of Mourinho utilising drones to monitor the training of his players at Roma, did any of the guys' coaches ever use any weird tactics to monitor them in training? Oh, Stevie, when you were at the Revs, did you get the drones up? No. <laughs> no. No. Would you have done? Yeah, probably I. Really? Well, yeah, because you can you can see how your back four's lining or not with somebody right? separated. You can yeah. fly I mean, in the you drone. Can, yeah. You can use it. <laughs> imagine no, them again, him and Maris trying to, to get fly a drone. Mariner with a joystick. <laughs> You'd be like, ah, no, you have a go. No, you have a go. No, no, you here. You know. Let me crash your left, right and centre. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, absolutely you would. I mean, look at, look at teams now. They have... They have scaffolding by the side of the field so they can get yep. the cameras on it and then that, and that's just what they're doing. They're looking at the shape, they're looking positional, I mean, everything. So, yes, if, if you had somebody that could work it, <laughs> then yes. <laughs> Mariner. <laughs> yeah. I Neither I of like you. Paul's, uh, oh my goodness. skill set was that. It was like when both of you didn't know where the colon was oh. on a keyboard. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, <laughs> for, have, have you had any weird training experiences, Don? Anyone trying to do Not something really. strange? No. no. I suppose it's a no, when, generation. Well, when, when Stevie said about the scaffold, that took me back to Coventry and Mickey Adams was there and he had the scaffold up and he was had a cameraman up there sort of like videoing down on the, on the 7v7s, 11v11s, so you get an idea, like Stevie said, about the shape. But I don't know if you need drones, do you? Don't need drones to do that. Hmm. Luddite. Right, for everyone. Distracting those yellow, you know, you strip the yellow things behind these. It looks like he's got mufflers on. What are we talking uh, about? Don't Tom's see. ears. What? Two yeah, yellow things in his that. ears. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's the caps. Oh, it's the caps. Scotland caps. But when he gets, yeah. when he gets his head Look, right get, in the middle, he's right. got two yellow <laughs> yeah. ears. Yeah. There you go. Someone said yeah. he's got like bunches yeah, yeah. coming like, out. It's like, like pink tails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move over here. Um, for everyone, have you ever played with someone who was very quiet in the dressing room? Yes. But then very loud on the pitch? Well, I don't know about loud, but Mark Hughes, I've said, I've told you this before, Mark Hughes was one of the quietest guys in the dressing room that I've ever come across. Well, we were talking top players, right? Yeah. So, one of the best uh, strikers of his generation. But he turned into an absolute, Psychopath when he crossed it. And I, I said to him once, I said, what, what, what is it with you? He said, you want to fight the world? I said, you never said, all week you haven't said a dicky bud. <laughs> I said, you haven't said a thing in the dressing room for an hour before the game. Now you're trying to fight the world. Yeah. He said, as soon as I crossed the white line, lad, that's it. He said, I'm, I'm fighting centre halves. They've kicked me. They've <laughs> kicked me from behind for a decade. So I'm going for a fight. Yeah. Dressing room? Set there, wouldn't be a wob. Chris Coleman was saying the same because obviously they played together for Wales, yeah. but when they played domestically with Fulham against um, United, did, I think it was. Did he, he say the same he thing? He said first minute, huge yeah. bang, right in his nose. I went to a testimonial dinner for Bruce Garobola in Wales. Right. And Hughes was there. I don't think he said a word all night. Oh. Really? He just sat there all night, never spoke. Big Norman Whiteside was about the same. Big Norman was the nicest man of the field right. you could wish to meet. But when he got on the field, I mean, he just went like that, took the 
took the mask off and this <laughs> apparition appeared. <laughs> I've told you the uh, annihilator. I think I shall retell it, but the Keith Curl story. Keith Curl being former centre half of a few clubs in England, Sheffield United, Wimbledon, right. Manchester City, yeah, it was at City when Man City were still playing at Main Road. And we were playing it uh, against City at Main Road. And Mark Hughes had still had his house in Manchester from his time at Man United and was travelling to London, blah, blah, blah. So we were playing at Main Road and I turned round and I kid you not, Mark Hughes and Keith Curra were on the floor and as I turned round, Mark Hughes just booted Keith Curra in the head. Right, while the referee wasn't looking. Right. They were basically having a scrap and Sparky just kicked him in the head. And after the game, we're in the showers and the bath and I said to him, what are you doing tonight when we go back to London? And he said, I'm going out for a meal with Keith Curl and his wife. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's my neighbour. And I went, just seen you kick him in the head. He went, over the white line. Wow. He was going for a meal with him. Wow. Don, was there anyone you played it with who was quiet off and then a crazy person on? Yeah, I had Mark Hughes at Everton. He came to Everton for about right. six months when he was about 38, 39. And he came and obviously, you know, as I said before, when you get to a certain age, you pass your best. And he was terrible on a Monday. Oh, the worst right. train on a Tuesday, day off on a Wednesday, awful on a Thursday, little tippy-tappy five-a-side on a Friday, man possessed on a Saturday. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Duncan Ferguson was a little bit the same, where he was quite quiet. I wouldn't say Dunk was shy, but he wasn't as vocal as you would probably imagine. He was on the pitch, by the way. He wanted to fight the world and take everyone on and prove that he was the best. But Monday to Friday, he was quite, quite quiet. Remember the bib? You'll not know this. Uh, usually, at most clubs, I would imagine, but after training, you used to have a vote for the worst trainer. Right, okay. So after every mm. training session, you'd have a vote. Who was the worst trainer right. today? Yeah. And they used to get a bib, yellow bib or something. Oh, like the bib of doom. And they had to put it on, and basically right. the boys took the, well, watch it out of them. Yeah. We used to give it to Sparky before training. There you go, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that on, lad, will you? But then he was obviously yeah incredible when it, when it really when it really mattered not on the training ground on the pitch he was I hope he doesn't watch this. Uh, speaking of feisty players, Don, pick one: Roy Keane or Patrick Vieira. What in, in what sense having a fight player pick all one. round ability? Just, all I've got is pick one, Don. You can Keane, I, I would say, but yeah. not much in it. Not much in it. Both winners. Uh, both probably the best I've ever played against. Vieira definitely in that bracket. Stevie G in that bracket. But the Fine. two of them were just... <laughs> the two of them were just animals, man. You stood in the tunnel and you thought, like, got to be on my game today. Yeah. Is there anything I've got in my locker that I can try and beat them at? I was a cross-country runner, so I could maybe try and run them around the pitch. <laughs> that weren't going to happen with them two. And you're not, you're not an, Olymp you're not an Olympian, Olympian, are you? Hold on a minute. Hold on a second. You're not an Olympian, when, are you? When were you a cross-country runner? <laughs> I mean, when was I a cross-country runner? Well, it's, well, it's cool when you were like 12. What? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Roy. You don't remember Patrick. me at pre-season, Stevie. You wouldn't remember me at pre-season because no. you were at the back and I was at the no. front. Oh, it was across yeah, country. No. Exactly. Well, 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 were you there? Yeah, I, thought you, I thought you were out in the field jumping fences. And no, all. I mean, Steve McManaman, we were a couple of hundred yards ahead of you. Lot. Yeah. Is it harder to play in 100 degrees heat or in the cold, Don? Ah, oh, heat. Yeah. I was rubbish in the heat. Right. How would that I affect was, your cross-country times? I would be... I would be last pick if you're picking anyone to play in the heat i just felt drained my legs were gone i couldn't do 15k cross country style couldn't do it just couldn't do it yeah. no good heat the worst oh yeah yeah washington worst place i ever played for humidity in may right one year for scotland and a, a preparation for the world cup we played the us oh my god and I, as soon as i walked out yeah humidity down there i was Bad you, couldn't, there, you couldn't breathe. Yeah, we had to. We actually had to carry a few of the guys with the revs when we played DC. Yeah, uh, on a midweek game. When the final whistle went, I'm going to say 50% of our players and maybe 25% of their players were all lying on the ground on the back and just lay there. Just gone. 
Well, they were just completely gone. Oof. Must have taken us about 20 minutes to get everybody off the field because they couldn't get up. They just you had to drag them and right. like that. I mean, it was just ridiculous the humidity. Have any of you ever discouraged another player from joining a club based on a bad personal experience? Don, you've been to many clubs. Did anyone ever ask your advice about one and you gave it gave it to them straight? Mm, John Oster was going to sign for West Ham, who was my best mate at the time, and Alan Pardew was the manager, and me and Alan Pardew did not get on whatsoever. But I didn't discourage him from the move because it would have made him more money. He was playing for a bigger club, leaving Sunderland to West Ham. Uh, he went to meet Alan Pardew. I dropped him off at Alan's house. Oh. I didn't go in because we didn't get on. Then I picked him up an hour and a half later. Had it a go. Not going to sign for him. Don't fancy him. Don't like him. Not signing. Wow. But I would do never when... discourage anyone from making a move. What'd you do when Austin was in having these talks? He's going to do like, you know, <laughs> cross country, right? 20 mile or something, <laughs> you know, just shake it off. Yeah, but, <laughs> Why is he not... 20 mile to the coffee Why is he shop? not your best mate anymore, Don? No, it was, uh, he is, but he was at the time. We were, we were really close at the time. We were at uh, Everton together. Then we both left Everton and went to Sunderland, so we spent a lot of time together. But he's, he lives up in the North East now, and I'm in London. Don's got new mates, and most of them are in West Hartford. Hey, he's got, well, he's got Frank, yes. and he's got Joe, <laughs> Jody Morris. Uh, Craig, do you ever get mad at your producers for having to talk about Ollie for what it is like five days in a row? <laughs> Did you send this in for yourself? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Do you ever get mad at producers? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Often. What did you no, say? Not what really. did you say to me this morning? No, but, but I, we're, on the, we're on the first fairway. Right. And he went, tell you what, this Ollie thing's getting a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must have. <laughs> but it's so quiet at the moment. I did, throw, Jan, I did throw Jan's name in there as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I think it's, I don't get as mad at the moment because it's understandable because there's not a lot else happening. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I really want to talk about the Gold Cup. Okay, not, I'm, well, I've been told I'm not uh, allowed. Uh, it's Qatar tonight, isn't it? Hey. Oh, is it the Qatar US tonight? <laughs> tonight, yeah, Thursday. I'm not been watching yeah. that. There we go. What's the other game? Uh, Mexico, Canada. Mexico, Canada. What? what are you looking up there for? Well, I was using my brain, I had to look up. And where is that game? <laughs> Qatar US, do we know what that is? Someone's uh, going to tell uh, you in your ear. Austin. Oh, yeah, Austin. Well, Austin, 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 and then yeah, the final is in Las Vegas. Really? And what about the other Sammy? Uh, I think it's a double header, isn't it? In the same place. Is it? Mm -hmm. A yeah, double we... header, so two double headers. Who doesn't want more of the gold cup? There we go. It's right. marvellous. I don't, I don't know how we got onto this. Um, well, that's a different subject. Who's tactically better, Ollie Craig? Tomorrow. Who's tactically better? Oli, Gonna Solskjaer, or Mikel Arteta? Who's tactically better? Oh, you're right, Stevie. What's wrong? <laughs> just... Oh, that's quite the face. I know, it just annoys me, all this tactics. And... When a team plays. 4-5-1 oh. and defend for 90 minutes and get a goal in the breakaway. <laughs> People see that sometimes as great tactics. It's the simplest thing you can do. Yes, exactly. Okay. I would say... A master class. A master... I could rip up my beak. A oh, master ma class yeah. from master Marino. Oh, yeah. Wow. What, sticking 10 men behind the ball? We haven't said that for a while, to be fair. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> Don, what's the worst haircut you've ever had? Is it close to Stevie's? <laughs> Oh, I mean, Stevie's is a shocker. I mean, what did you ask for, Stevie? A two and a three? <laughs> yes. I did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pre-season at Sunderland, and in the heat, in pre-season, away for three or four weeks, I was just bored, senseless. And Danny DiCio fan fancied himself as a little bit of a sort of barber. So I asked him the same, short back and sides. He just went straight through the middle of a zero. Bang. Nice. Straight through the middle. Gullible. <laughs> The most, <laughs> the most, and welcome once again, 2021 most gullible man in TV. <laughs> I wasn't bothered, I wasn't bothered. I was still the gas station again, like, isn't it? it the, we're the family wanting to go back to that, Asking a player <laughs> to cut your hair and he's not going to go through the group. <laughs> Don, did you, have, did you ever have bleached hair? I haven't seen a picture of you with bleached hair no, with Jamie Redknapp. No, no. I no, I te no, I've never done a bleach. I'll tell you what I had. Oh, Don's daft, but Hartley he's not that Bull. daft. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what I had when I left Hartlepool to Liverpool because it was the rage at the time. Oh. I had the tips. Do you remember the tips? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. So that's bleach. What was the it? tips? That's where you yeah, just get like, the top of the, 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 wee the, top of the oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I had my tips done as well. Yeah, I had the tips done. That, uh, that was as far as I went with the bleach. Did anybody ever? I did this. This is crazy. Oh, right. I, I remember back in the day when they were having the back, just the back of your hair permed. No, Craig. Oh, no. Yeah, the, no. Like the, the Waddle thing. Chrissy Waddle. Waddle. Oh, the mullet. You're like, like a, a permed mullet. Yeah, yeah. 
Did you get that done? Yeah. Oh, crazy. It's got to be a picture that? of you like that. No. Oh, that'd be amazing. How old were you? 33. <laughs> hmm. uh, 47. <laughs> About 19, I think. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. You would go in and voluntarily ask for a perm. Well, that was the rage. <laughs> Partly. <laughs> Oh, he, was a, he was a father and a husband when he got his whole hair blonde. So he's more than capable of doing it later on. You know I, what I mean? I know, but that's quite a statement. <laughs> Just to know what the difference is between a two and a three <laughs> and a two and a five. What's that got to do For Don, I've seen you on the other show. Wow. What with, other show? With Ian and Kelly. Oh, sure. Which crew do you like better, Ian Kelly or the ESPN FC crew? What's the show? I don't know, maybe with Kelly Cates and Ian Dark? I don't know. But that Premier League one. Oh, Premier probably. League, do you do something with the Premier League with Kelly? No, no, I think uh, that is a lot of tosh, I think. Oh dear. Oh. I've seen you on the other show with Ian and Kelly. Well, Ian Dark is only ESPN. Right. So I've not worked with Ian Dark on any other show. Kelly a little bit with the Premier League, but not really about, she so, works with. Okay, so who do you prefer to work with, the Premier League channel or ESPN? So ESPN tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah, I bet you do. You said he worked well. <laughs> yeah, Ian, Ian, Ian doesn't do the Premier League uh, okay. studio. No. Fi yeah. Final question. Hypothetically, I'm taking yes. Don, Stevie and Craig out for a drink at the bar. Can they predict what the others are drinking? Yeah, I predict not. Jesus, God. <laughs> it's the easiest thing <laughs> ever. Yeah, it's not you might, I might have a bit of a choice. You might have a bit of a choice of some. Don might waver and go for some. No. Budweiser. Budweiser. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty much. I think it's, it's just. The it's, easiest it's, thing. I think it's Largo around, isn't it, Don? Well, yeah, unless you get around a peach snaps in like you did the last time I was over. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.